Hey everyone, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here. And in this video, we are mounting some Stuart Warner gauges in my 1932 Ford. Well, it's been a bit since we've done a video on the 32. The last one we did, we painted and installed the dash. So now, naturally, the next step is to put some gauges in. Uh, for those that have watched this build since the beginning, when I drove this car home, it had no gauges. Well, I shouldn't say it had no gauges. It had gauges in these holes, but none of them were hooked up to anything, and none of them matched. These holes look like they were probably cut out with a tin pair of tin snips. They're not the best. Probably, I mean, they'd probably work okay, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. Uh, I found these gauges at a swap meet a little while ago. They're just a pair of Stuart Warner oil pressure and water temperature gauges. I think I paid $5 for the pair of them. I don't know if they work or not, and this tube is definitely not in the nicest shape. And if that doesn't work, or if this is damaged, the gauge doesn't work. I haven't actually tested it. They're pretty easy to test these. All you gotta do is just put a pot of water in your wife or girlfriend's favorite pot, put it on the stove, crank it up, dunk this inside, and you know when the water starts boiling, it should be reading about 200 degrees, or 220, which is, I don't know. I'm in Canada, we use Celsius, so I don't know exactly when water boils. 212, I think it's 212. I don't know, it doesn't matter, but as you know, the water gets hot, the gauge should start doing stuff. Uh, the speedometer that was in this car used to sit right there. Cool old Stuart Warner piece. I always thought it was interesting how it just goes from zero to 10. I assumed that that meant like, it was kind of like a tachometer, like the two accident or actually meant like 20 miles per hour, the five meant 50 miles per hour. I've since discovered that this speedometer actually does only go to 10 miles per hour. I did some research on trying to see what era it was from, like what the vintage is on it. And it's for like construction equipment. In fact, it's designed to like go on the hub, primarily for like the machines that paint the lines on the road, which is why the odometer goes to the 10th and 100th of a mile. So probably won't use this. However, I don't have any other speedometer to put in this car. So we'll probably just use this one as like a mock-up for now. There is, it's mechanical, obviously. Uh, if you guys remember when we were working on Gordy's Arden Powered 32 Roadster, I hooked a GPS box up to, it had a Pontiac dash in it, a 50 Pontiac dash. And I hooked this little GPS box up to the original 50 Pontiac speedometer. Super cool piece. We could make that work with this and just calibrate it so that like six meant 60 miles per hour. And I'm pretty sure that that box would work. However, that box is like over a thousand dollars. So probably not gonna go that route. When I put it in Gordy's car, it was expensive then. It was like, I think 570 or something. And yeah, somehow it's gone up to like a thousand dollars. So I don't know if I'll go that route. Probably not. I don't like buying thousand dollar parts that are only this big and their only purpose is to make the speedometer work. So we'll just mock this up temporarily for now. And then when I find another alternative for a speedometer, swap meet season's coming up. So we'll cross that bridge then. Maybe we'll find another one. In the meantime, I have got a Stuart Warner, a new oil pressure, a new water temperature. These are both electric because I prefer electric gauges. They're just less bulky, easier to wire in and make it nice and clean looking. And then we've also got a fuel gauge. If you remember when we did the video on the fuel tank, we figured out the ohm reading on the, the sending unit and determined that it matches the same ohms that Stuart Warner gauges use. So I've got the Stuart Warner fuel gauge. I'm not gonna put an amp gauge or a volt gauge in it because that's, I wanna try to keep this dash like pretty simple and minimalistic. So I just got the essential ones. 
you can still drive a car even if it's not charging and you'll kind of notice if it's not charging because your lights will start to get dim or it'll start cranking over really hard or slow when you go to start it so volt gauge i'm not too concerned about these three gauges so okay back up a little bit my original plan was to put the speedometer and these three gauges all in here with like the speedometer over here and then the three gauges i've laid that out a little bit and it doesn't work reason it doesn't work is i was judging or basing all that off of this insert when the dash was not on and it's actually quite a bit bigger behind the dash when i put the dash back in this got a lot smaller so that's not going to work but i've got a plan b we're going to put the three gauges still in here these three little guys and then the speedometer we're going to do something funky with so we'll get to that later in the meantime let's start on this so I drew this up a couple days ago. This dotted line in there, that represents how big the actual insert is once the dash is on. And then this blue line is how big that actual panel is. So I've got three gauges laid out here. We've got our holes marked. That's what it should look like. So we're gonna cut that out of a fresh sheet of 18 gauge and then put our gauges in there. We're going to upholster this and then attach it to that original insert. Well, I was about to show you how this fits in here. Like so, it fits great by the way, love that. But when I opened this box up to get the new gauge out, I realized there's no sending unit with this water temperature gauge. Are you serious? Like, come on, Stuart Warner, this was $70. I paid $70 for this gauge and you don't include the sending unit? Who does that? That's like buying shoes and they don't come with shoelaces. Like, come on, that's bullshit. Not happy about that. This really pissed me off actually. I was hoping to put these in today, but no, now I gotta make another order and ship another package from the United States to Canada, pay more duty and shipping and taxes on top of that because you didn't put the damn sending unit in? Not cool, Stuart Warner, not cool at all. Anyways. There's the gauge, fits in there great. I'm assuming the other gauges will probably fit too and probably don't have sending units. What the hell? Come on. All right, anyways, moving on, rant over. Let's, ah, uh, hold up. I think before we start the upholster nation on this, we should see how it fits on there because I think we're probably gonna have to cut that one to fit these holes, at least these two for sure. This one will probably be fine with the speedometer because there's a big hole, honking speedometer hole back there. Yeah, there it is right there. $69.54. And when you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, sending unit included? No, I have never bought a gauge in my life that did not have a sending unit. Hopefully these original four sending units there's the water temperature there and then here's the oil pressure here maybe they'll work with the gauges we'll try them first before i order the actual stuart warner ones i'm just unbolting the dash right now so that we can mock that other piece up and see how our gauge holes line up i'm assuming we're gonna have to maybe open them up a little bit Get this guy out of here. You can see how much bigger this is now. 
All right. Yeah, we're going to have to go quite a bit. There we go. So if we trim this out, we should be okay. All right, so that worked out pretty good. I think we can take this piece now and woo, we will take it upstairs and start upholstering it. What do you think, little man? You don't care. Good time. So we've taken, come on, get on there. We've got our piece and I found a piece of quarter inch foam in the scrap bin that is bang on perfect the right size so we'll spray a little bit of glue on our metal spray the metal first always because it takes a little bit longer to tack up on there then we'll set this right there and a little bit of glue on here And we'll give that a minute to tack up or 30 seconds. We'll take this and just plop her down like that. You don't want to push too hard on it yet because this foam is soft enough that with the glue on it, if you squish it or like pick it up, your fingerprints will glue the foam down and it'll, it'll stay down. So we're just going to take this set it to the side for now and get our material our vinyl ready this is the same pearl white these kids are always leaving their toys laying around this is the same pearl white that we did the column drop in the whole interior is slowly going to go in this so if we cut a piece about that size, or should we go that way? I will go this way. Yeah, it should be okay. Bam. There's our piece of vinyl. Can put this away. Get our turkey carver again and then we're just gonna trim around this trying to keep it 90 degrees bam this is garbage Cut our gauge holes out. There's our piece foamed and ready to wrap. Now that we've got our foam work done, we can take our piece of vinyl and we're gonna lay it flat on the table. Drop this guy in place, like so. I'll probably trim some of this excess stuff off to make it, you know, if we had about that big all the way around. In fact, let's grab a grease pencil here and we'll just do that right now probably about that big if you leave too much on there 
and start wrapping it, it just gets way too bulky. Put some gauge holes in there just so we got a reference of where to set it. And then, yeah, once we cut this out, we can, I'll probably switch to time lapse at that point and then just wrap it, spray glue on it, pull it, stick it down. Panel insert done. Let's go back down and put it in, see what it looks like. We got all our gauges out of the boxes and ready to go in. They're gonna be pretty snug going through here because I realized just after I cut this plate out that I did not cut or like allow the thickness of the vinyl. So they're gonna be a little snug, but I think they'll work their way through. Uh, fuel gauge, I wanna do the fuel gauge on the far right because of the three it is the less important. I always put gauges in like their order of importance like oil pressure, water temperature, fuel. So, oh is it gonna go? I think it's gonna go. It's just gonna be snug. Oh yeah, it'll go. She'll go. Bam. Almost don't even need these little things to hold it in. Okay, let's make sure it's straight. It's the hardest part with gauges. Cool. What's next? Water temperature. I think oil pressure is more important than water temperature. So I'll get these other two in and then we'll fit it in the car. And I'll show you how I'm gonna hold it in place. So my plan to hold this in place is to use the little tangs that hold the gauges in, and I'm just gonna double them up behind here. So let's fit this through, get our wires going the right way. Okay, that wire goes there, that wire goes there, and this wire goes there. And now we can take these little tabs and go underneath. Oh man, I should have brought a light with me. Yeah, that should work great. All right, that is in there. Let's put our dash panel back in, and that should suck the sides down a little bit. Where'd our bolt holes go? There we go. Wow, that turned out. Like, you know when you have an idea in your head and then you execute it? This is one of those ideas that turned out even better in person than I thought it did in my head. So the gauges countersunk down into that foam and then this little ring also sunk down into the foam to really kind of give it that puffy upholstered look. I'm so stoked on this. Got all our gauges centered. So now we gotta figure out the speedometer. So the speedometer, where are we gonna put the speedometer? So I thought about this quite a bit. I started this project 
last weekend, but I didn't actually do any work on it last weekend. Last weekend was mostly just trying to figure it all out and planning. So I was trying to figure out where to put a speedometer or I was thinking maybe in the dash, maybe up above the windshield, a bunch of different spots. None of it really worked. And then I thought, what about like a steering column mount, like how a tachometer is usually mounted on the steering column. It's like, that's actually, I think I'm into that idea. So I didn't have a speedometer cup, like the one, or a tack cup, the ones that like hose clamp to the, the steering column. So I went online and started looking at them from Summit and stuff. And they were like 50 bucks. It's like, that's a lot of money for basically just like a little piece of tin that someone chrome. So I decided to go shopping. Thought I'll hit the dollar store, maybe look at like measuring cups or like some of those, maybe those insulated coffee cups or something. So of course Shannon comes along with me because she's always down for a trip to the dollar store. And that's when we found it. The perfect tack cup. A Moscow mule mug. So we saw these at the dollar store for $4.50, but they weren't copper. And Moscow mule mugs are always copper. So she said, I know where there's some. So we went over to HomeSense and I actually bought two of them. They had a two pack there for 15 bucks, which was, you know, a lot more than the $4 from the one at the dollar store, but I got two of them and they're actually copper so that they match my copper steering column. So I wasn't quite sure how to mount it because this little end is a little bit, you know, weird. So just right now I decided I'd mock it up with a hose clamp and it's actually, the hose clamp holds it nice and solid on there. So now we just need to get the speedometer to actually fit snug in there. It's just a tad bit loose. So I started wrapping a little bit of electrical tape around there and I got to put a little more on but I think it'll fit pretty nice in there. Okay, I've given it some quite a few wraps of electrical tape and it's snug in there now. Might have a little bit too much tape actually. Let's give it a try. Yeah, I gotta take, take a little bit off. Let's go two, two wraps. Straight, yep. Oh, perfect. All right, there we go. So I'm not gonna drill a hole for the speedometer cable yet because remember this is just a temporary speedometer and I don't know speedometer that goes in here if it's gonna be mechanical or electric or what the deal is. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. If anyone asks, I'm just gonna tell them it's Bluetooth. Yeah, I'm really into this. I like this little gauge pod. Can't wait to get this thing up to 10 miles per hour. Woo, hang on. All right, I think our gauges are installed, sort of. And the reason I say sort of is because obviously we still have to wire them up, but we have no wires to wire into. This car, the only wiring in this car right now is literally just enough to start it and drive it around the parking lot and shut it off again. So I think for the next video, we're gonna have to start wiring. We're gonna have to make a, make a little fuse block, mount our fuse block somewhere, and then start running some wire. Uh, I don't wanna do that in this video though because it is four o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, and I just I don't wanna be in the shop anymore. It's time to go do other stuff. So anyways, thanks everybody for watching. There's. There's the video on putting the gauges in my 32 Ford. So, thanks everybody for watching. If you want to support the channel, please check out lgspeedcustom.com. Get yourself some LG Speed and custom merch. And yeah, thanks for watching again. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bam! Bam! Yeah, I can't wait. This is a flathead. It's never going to go like that. It's going to be like... I've never had a fast hot rod. Every hot rod I've ever owned has been flathead powered. I think the next car, next car I build, is gonna have an overhead, something with high RPMs and a four speed. Something you can really like drive the shit out of it, not worry about breaking it.